redzonesports.bet, the British home of American sports. Hey guys and welcome to this week's episode of the Sports Heads NBA edition sponsored by RedZoneSports.bet. My name is Tori and I am accompanied by Steve and Nick. Happy New Year guys. Happy New Year. Happy New Year. 2018. Good oh God. I know, I don't really understand how it that flew, happened. Flew by. Yeah. Well, you know you add another number to the end of 2017. Actually you don't add another number, you change the number at the end. Mm-hmm. Anyway, before I get all smart, <laughs> um, <laughs> it's New Year. Let's talk, about, let's talk about some New Year's resolutions. Mm. I personally don't like to set them, but New if you were a general manager, mm-hmm. would you put some into play? And if so, what? I, I, I'm, yeah, I'm happy with that. Uh, Memphis. Okay, yeah. Memphis are just an absolute disaster. I mean, we talked about them on the show quite a lot. I mean, they got rid of their coach fairly early mm. on, despite getting off to a really good start. Yeah. And then Mark Gasol doesn't seem as though he's happy. Mike Conley's injured. Chandler Parsons is injured again. I mean, what a surprise that is. Please. Memphis have got a couple of the worst contracts, I think, in the NBA now. They have Mike Conley, who I think was an underrated player, and now also we're looking at as an mm. overrated player. Now they paid him a hell of a lot overpaid of money. Overpaid player, maybe. Yeah, he's overpaid now. I mean, Parsons is, is a bad contract, but Conley isn't that far behind that contract now. Yeah. If I was Memphis, I would get rid of Marc Gasol and go full-on tank. They are currently at the moment the fourth worst record in the NBA. If you've got a worse record than Dallas, who would have thought that Memphis would have had a worse yeah. record than Dallas coming into this season, this point in the season? Not a chance. Go and get help in the draft. There is help there for you. Even if you wanted to, why not move Mike Conley as well? Go full on tank. Get rid of Conley. I think you know, if they can do that, I would go and look at a guy like Trey Young from Oklahoma. Oh, that guy's incredible. He, I mean, what's it, 25 assists the other week? That guy is incredible. Just really a phenomenal point guard. Even that, I'll go and get a guy like Luka Doncic, who I'm really high on from Europe as well. They may not get the number one overall pick, but I think this draft is quite deep from one to five. So there is certainly some help there if they want to go and do that. But they've got to maintain the fact that they can't win games going forward. Get rid of Gussell's contract. Get rid of Conley's contract. Because Parsons' contract doesn't look as bad when you have cheap players around him. At the moment, it only looks bad because you don't have the flexibility under the cap because of other players soaking it up as well. So therefore, go and get the cheap players. I think that's what I would be surprising Memphis. if they did something relatively drastic either. That seems to be their, uh, got to. their way, yeah. doesn't it? So It's going to be interesting. It's coming up soon, yeah. so the deadline. So it will and be also, they've had this nucleus of players very much for the last few years. They've made some noise in the Western Conference in the players. Teams didn't really want to play them. But, you know, this is a team that's not going to be a playoff team this year. I think they're eight games back in the playoffs already. You can't see them getting back to 500, which you're going to need to be to be a contender in those playoff spots. You know, Memphis for me, move forward and tank. No, it's interesting. I, I, I like that. I think that. I think they're going to have to do that, to be honest. I think there's a few teams that are going to be doing that soon. But for my resolution, I, this was a tough one. I and mean, it was kind of generic, you know, injury-free type thing. That's what you'd want. But look at things, I think the Lakers. The Lakers, if they could redo the draft in a way. I think it's not really a knock on ball. I, I, I'm just not, I think there's just too much pressure. And they're, you know, 11 and 26 as it stands. So they just need to kind of, if they could restart the whole season over, I think they'd, uh, they'd take that. Yeah, I mean, uh, you look at the draft. I mean, the Lakers probably want to redo it. The Sixers probably want to redo it. Mm. I think and then Danny Ainge is sitting there going, well, I ain't got the player I wanted. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, so it's an injury. I mean, but again, it goes back to injuries. For me, it, my resolution would be have everyone be injury free and then we can actually see who is the best team. Never going to happen. Never going to happen. No. No, it was a, it was a lovely sentiment. Well, like lovely th- sentiment. Just like most people's resolutions are never going to happen. They're never going to stick to them. It, yeah, I was going to say, well, give you yourself a couple of days and exactly. uh, soon goes out the window. Uh, looking back on a little bit of news from last week, so the Raptors were, they looked relatively frustrated last Wednesday's game. The mm. Barker then apparently got very frustrated later on. Um, there was a altercation with a staff member. We don't know any more details than that. The Raptors decided not to talk about it, but they gave him a one-game suspension. Uh, I mean, is this something that we should be concerned about? I mean, it seems like it was relatively tame. We don't know, but... I like it. I like it a bit. I mean, we've seen a bit of this. We saw a couple of weeks ago with... uh, and to Patung, Giannis will come, mm. right? Maybe he did that in Milwaukee, him and the, the coach going to the sideline. It happens, it's, you know, it's a long season, it's pressure, it's, you know, intense. Yeah, you should. I, I want to see guys frustrated and angry yeah. for whatever reason. I was going to say for losing, but they're not losing. So, I don't know, I, 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 I don't think it's a big deal. He's, he's not that kind of a player. He's, you know, yeah. been around a while and he's known as a, 
He's a tough guy, but he's not a he's the energy cancer in the locker room. The energy yeah, of the team, the glue, isn't he, if you want to, so whatever. Yeah. yeah, I mean, he is a glue guy. I mean, again, I'm not surprised we haven't heard anything about this. I mean, it's an internal matter, and the Raptors have just dealt with it. One game suspension, that's fair enough. I think for me, Toronto going forward are going to have to prove they do have the toughness to compete in the NBA because I think that's one thing. Again, we look mm. at them. I don't want to call them soft, but yeah. they're not a team yeah, that I would go up against in the playoffs and think, you know what, they're going to they're going to bang us around a bit. Right? Yeah. No. 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 If you're physical that. with them, yeah, you they, can beat got, them. they beat you with finesse. Yeah. So to have a guy like a Barker is very important to them when he's going to be a big contributor going forward, hopefully, mm. on a successful Toronto playoff run. I'm not concerned about this. And obviously, if it happens again, then obviously then we do have a real issue. Yeah. Um, we never really heard any issues with him when he was in Oklahoma City. That's right. So I really don't have an issue with this, and I'm not surprised that we haven't seen anything more about it. Yeah. yeah. So then moving forward, we're going to New Year's Eve. So Harden ended up with a hamstring injury against mm. the Lakers. Uh, they they think he's going to be about out for around two weeks. <laughs> you, for his sake, you kind of hope it's no longer than that. This could affect his MVP chances. And how does this look for the Rockets when he's scoring like thirty points a game? That's going to be quite a big difference for the rest of the team. They're all going to have to play. I think a the issue, I think the thing is here. I mean, I know they they had a successful run with when CP3 was out and James Harden picks up the offense. But James Harden didn't play. He's a, he's a volume scorer. Yeah. CP3 is obviously very much a facilitator. He can put up 20, 25 points when needed, but he's not going to give you the 45, 50 that Harden's given you at times when he's needed to take mm. over a game. I, I think Houston will be fine. The damage is done. They're still going to be the two seed coming out of this. I mean, the Warriors have already overtaken them anyway. They've just got back Steph Curry. Um, in terms of MVP chances, for me, at the moment, I don't really think he is the MVP. So I don't think it damages him, but I don't, it, even if he was playing, I don't think he's going to be able to elevate himself in these two weeks to make that much of a real difference. He's yeah. got to give LeBron a go in the, in the long run. They are the leading candidates for MVP, because you took the LeBron out of the Cavs, they're a completely different team. Yeah. You, you're going to see what Harden being out for the Rockets That's what I was in these next with. couple of weeks is about his team. Yeah. So maybe indirectly that could help his case. Yeah. If the Rockets fall off of a Exactly. You know, for Cliff. Like addition by then, subtraction. You know, yeah. we yeah. could then tell myself, well, actually, you know, Harden really makes the, the, the big difference with his mm. team. We do know that anyway, yeah. but to so what extent we don't know. 36% possession. Yeah, everything yeah. goes through him. But, I mean, Chris Paul, you know, I think they're probably the one team that, that can have this loss for a short term, where Paul will just take that ball himself. And I don't know, I, I've always been a thing, like, say, 30 points, just by Harden out, it doesn't mean they're going to score 30 points less. You know, yeah. it means no. other guys have yeah. to step up and thing. And this is where. Teams have to prove it, but I really do believe what you, what you said. I think if they do struggle, it will show Harden's worth more. Yeah. yeah. So it could be a good thing for him, to be fair. And a bit of rest in the middle of the season is not a bad thing either. So. No, and I think, you know, at the end of the day, they're not going to rush him back. Yeah. They'd be stupid enough no, to do that right. because, you know, they, as I say, they are the second seed in the West. They're not going to overtake the Warriors at this point. I you, think you're not going to win anything in, in January. At the end of the day, you want to be healthy ready to go for a seven-game war, potentially yeah. against the Warriors come June. And it's not like it's Oklahoma City where they're still trying to figure, figure thing things out. out. They, they I know think they've got to be pleasantly surprised how well they are playing together right now. If I was a GM of Houston, I'd be... Yeah. It, it, I think they're above expectations right now. And oh, expected right. them to be yeah. good, but maybe not this good. Yeah. No, I, I agree with you, because nobody th knew exactly sure. what was going to happen, because, you know, CP3 coming into this, James Harden was the primary ball yeah. handler last year. All of a sudden, you then bring in the best point guard in the NBA and say you know, hang on a second here, we've got to figure out how this is going to work. Yeah. And it's worked better it's than worked. they thought. I mean, yeah. I know it was helped in some respects because CP3 was out, mm. but since CP3's come back, they haven't really dropped off either. No. So, mm. no, I'm pleased, but it'll be interesting what happens in the next couple of weeks. Agreed. Agreed. So, touching on Oklahoma City, uh, <laughs> they just just got nicked the other day. Uh, Janus, mm. <laughs> mm. final 0.9 seconds. Uh, yeah, so he seems to have stepped out of bounds, but that There's wasn't... No, no seams. It, yeah, <laughs> I was going to say, obviously it wasn't picked up till afterwards. Uh, Westbrook came out and said, look, what's done is done, and I think that's, that's fair right. enough because there's nothing yeah. you can do about it. But, I mean, what did this say for the NBA? There's has been three instances recently where... <laughs> yeah, I mean, uh, first of all, I'm going to take these off and I'm going to hand these to the referee. Right, well. You know, yeah. because it was right under his nose, yeah. right on the baseline. He didn't notice it. The thing is with this, is this play, as they tell and said, is not reviewable. There was, no, there was no whistle, there was no nothing. You know, at the end of the day, you can't review what you're not allowed to review. Yeah. It's where the rules are wrong. Mm. 
Mm. So I think the NBA need to take a look at this because we had a scenario last year where Markeith Morris hit a winning shot and that wasn't called back. Whoa. He was that was out of bounds. Mm. So they didn't do anything after that. I was gonna, the exact same thing, not the same thing seven out, but against the Knicks last year, John has hit a game winner that I uh, can't remember exactly what it was now, but they said it shouldn't have counted and it did. Yeah. And Knicks ended up losing and uh, probably derailed the whole season. But anyway, that's two, two years in a row of the same guy. I don't know. I, I think it's, uh, it's human error, as we said. It's, it's, it's part of a call. And I'm sure if you go back over the years, there's going to be so many times a guy stepped out of bounds. And this yeah. day and age, you should but be able you, to call it. I was going to say, do you not feel that there's been like three high profile things yeah. now? So uh, what you know, human error is one thing. Mm. But at the end of the day, I think the issue for me is the fact that this play wasn't reviewable. Mm. Why can we not have it that every single play can be reviewable? I'm not saying I want every no, play no, to no. be, but mm. at the end of the day, this one, because of the timing of the incident, what it meant to the game, no, I, I this one it. should have been reviewable. Yeah, yeah. Again, Something like a game where winners. Where's the kind of cut-off like, point? Like the it, NFL yeah. does, you know, yeah. game under two minutes, they're automatically yeah. reviewed. Maybe, you know, this un in the last five minutes of each quarter, any kind of play should be reviewed. Yeah. I mean, apparently this is not going to be looked at until March, I think, apparently. That's when they're going to first have a look at this. I mean, that to me is too late. Yeah, mm -hmm. okay, get it right to the playoffs if you want to. Yeah. But it's like the issue is, is a fact, it's not reviewable. Mm. That's the problem. People can argue as much as they want. We all know it's out of bounds. You've not have counted. But the rule is wrong. The rule needs to be amended for the better of the game. It does, but yeah. then where do you, you know what I mean? I don't know. I, I agree with this because this was a, such a big play and such an obvious play, but my thing is you can look at any game and be like, that was traveling, that was a carry, that was, you know, you can literally I, review I every possession. I don't think, yeah. I, I, I think, think like you said, though, if it, you just do like the last five minutes mm. of the fourth quarter. But then points in the first, in the first two se seconds of the game are just no as more important. important. No, you're right. I agree no with you there. That's true. Two seconds at no, the end I agree. Of the game. They're all points. I think I wouldn't. I, I suppose it's a dangerous game if you start opening it up and then saying every play is reviewable and then there's a problem with that. Mm. Then you then so go basically the other we way. We have no resolution. No. But, but I, I think you have to. Look, I think you have to look at this one. I don't want to look at travelling because the amount of travelling in the NBA right. is, you know, at the end of the day, you're going to get the referee stopping to 40 every games. second because yeah. the fact is the referee should be able to recognise what's travelling right. and what's not travelling yeah. it, it's a fairly easy rule to implement I think it has to be it's a common sense I mean looking at yeah. this guy this was common sense he stepped yeah. out of bounds so it should be but where you draw the line and who's this you know who but this one definitely should sense. be looked at it should be yeah well, one on a happier note, Isaiah Thomas made his, his return on Tuesday against mm. the, the Blazers. He played a little bit more than we were expecting, minute-wise, mm -hmm. obviously. Um, but obviously, then they didn't want him to play back-to-back -back games, so he didn't play against the Celtics last night. Was that the right decision? Absolutely. Yeah. I, I think it was the right decision. I mean, I think, I think what we'd have liked to have seen, obviously, is him not to play against the Blazers, but then play against the Celtics. That's what he would have liked. Yeah. Oh, I don't know. No one's really actually talked to him about no, this. You can't, you, know, you can't make assumptions of what he actually did mm -hmm. want. Again, you know, going against a, a lower pr in a lower profile game because obviously the Celtics against the Cavs, whatever time of the year it is, is a high profile game. He turned around and said that he didn't want any sort of like tribute video because he wasn't actually playing. That was something mm -hmm. else he said. Yeah. I mean, 19 minutes. I would have probably played him maybe a bit less than that, but I'm not critical of it. He scored 17 points, three threes. Well, he looked good. Yeah. He played yeah. really well. And I think, again, it's that big mental step, getting back out on the court. Yeah. Tyron Lee gave him a hug and said, welcome back. You know, LeBron James gave him a hug. I think it's good for the Cavs going forward because they, they have a player now that is, you know, a potential all-star, as we see year in, year out for him for a mm -hmm. while. I, I, I'm really pleased with his progress to be able to get back out on the court. And the first game back was... Was great to yeah, be able to say. I was going to say, I, I yeah. say it was well. just one game, but yeah, no, I, I agree with the not the back to backs. You're investing too yeah. much in the guy. Yeah, I'm, I am surprised though that uh, they didn't play him in Boston, nationally televised game. But then, you know, just building it up, you know what I mean? Yeah. It adds yeah. to, to the playoffs, you know what I mean? That's when his return will be in Boston. But he, and he did get a nice ovation from the crowd, they put him on the scoreboard, yeah. and so that was nice. Not literally, though. No, <laughs> well, he's, he's smaller now. Just throw him up. Huh? There, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Celtics fans don't dislike him that much. No, no, no. <laughs> no I was going to say it was. A, it was a nice reception. It was oh, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Well I mean. deserved. Yeah. Yeah. But, uh, I mean, we might as well just touch on the game last night. Mm -hmm. We discussed it last week. I, I, I thought it was a really good game. I thought it, it, one thing that, um, again, it kind of annoys you from a back-to-back -back point of view. It's obviously the Cavs come into that game, you know, off the back end of the game against Portland. They didn't look great. I mean, Love struggled, Wade struggled. Um, Celtics got very balanced scoring. And as I've said, you know, as long as they get that balanced scoring or that second option, yeah. 
they'll be fine going forward. I mean, Rosie was their top scorer last night. Yeah. So again, you know, Kyrie didn't, you know, didn't have the big game, which no. we kind of hoped he would do. But mm. I thought it was, it was a good game to watch. Yeah, no, it was a good game. It was one of those. Not quite as close as we expected it to no. be. No, and it wasn't, uh, you know, it's middle of the season kind of thing. I don't know. It was a good game and a good test. We'll see where the two teams are right now. But, uh, again, come playoff time, it's going to be completely different. Yeah, I was going to say, no bearing whatsoever come yeah. playoff time. So, because the, ne the next game's again at Boston, mm -hmm. February. Right, well, but we'll see if he's... I mean, they could be playing up to eight times if they go through the playoffs. No, they'll be playing more than that. It's a seven-game yeah. playoff series. It could be what, 11 yeah. times yeah. throughout the season. Right. Yeah, yeah. But that's Fine. good. That's, that's where the rivalries happen. Yeah, exactly. There we go. Starting off 2018 with a... Fireworks. Yes. Well, not four maybe not quite, but... Well. Hey, we'll go. We'll go. <laughs> um, so, I'm, I'm going to finish off today with a, a question for mm. you. So, who's got a better dunk? Oh. I'm going to give you Anthony Davis, Ron Baker, Westbrook of Bon Maker. I, I mean, I thought both of these dunks were great. They were... I really do think they were great dunks. And we've seen some really good dunks this year. I mean, I think, you know, as bad as a dunk contest is probably going to be at the All-Star weekend, mm. we're actually seeing better in-game dunks this year, I think. Power. Um, Anthony Davis exploding to the rim. Ron Baker tried to get out of the way by the looks of it. Got his face still in the way. I mean, as we're seeing now, you know, Ron, he's, Ouch. he's got a bit of a red eye there, yeah. as, as we're seeing. But um, I... I I mean, I, I spoke to Nick about this before we before we came in here. You know, we've seen this called an offensive foul. Mm. I wouldn't want it to be called an offensive foul, but it has happened. Um, I preferred the Anthony Davis dunk because I'm a big Anthony Davis fan, but nothing against a Westbrook dunk because mm. that was tremendous as well. I am going to go for the Westbrook dunk because that, I great mean, dunk. they were both great dunks, but Westbrook, I, you know, that was ferocious and tense, which I love. And Foul Maker's, uh, you know, a big target as yeah. well as a big guy, whereas uh, I just don't like the Pelicans going after. I think, I I think it went out of a personal so. one. A personal Jeez. one. You cannot go after our, our glue guy. Uh, now, that was, that was uh, Baker, you know, put his face in the way kind of a thing. And it was accidents happened. I think it was accidents. It was a good no call. Yeah. It, you know, it just it looks bad for Baker. Matador defense. Yeah. He'll have to wear a mask. He will. He is. He's going to wear the mask. There yeah. you go. <laughs> that brings us to a close on this week's episode. So make sure that you hit that subscribe button so that you do not miss out on any future episodes. And until then, have a great week. See you later. You gotta keep your eye on the ball, boys. Check out our latest hoops offer. RedZoneSports.bet, the British home of American sports.